All right, this is the project we're doing today on this DVD. It's my blue Christmas plate with the ribbon wrapping around it and our beautiful flowers and holly and pine in the middle. Let's get started. Okay, we're beginning this project here. This is the blue Christmas plate. Now, my original plate was on an eight and a half inch plate, and this one is ten and a half. So I had to adjust my pattern a little bit. So how I got my um, banding around the outer edge is I took my compass and I brought it in about half an inch to three quarters of an inch from the edge on this one. Now uh, my pattern instructions is for the smaller plate. And then I figured about how wide I wanted my band to be and I brought it in, which I think I brought it in, this line here is like an inch and a quarter from the edge, and then just marked my two lines all the way around. Now I wanted my ribbon that weaves in and out along the edge to be the same width as what the banding is. So I just went and made my marks all along, the same width as the banding, and then I just put a little dot in the ones that I will be painting. So I'm just using a flat uh, half inch flat brush to fill these in. I'll put two coats on here and you want to try and follow the shape of the plate so that your ribbon actually looks like it's curving around. Try not to go bigger than what you have marked or your ribbon is going to be you know all different shapes and sizes so you want to try and stay within those marks that you put on there so I'm gonna get all of my banding uh, ribbon painted on two coats and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I did the shading and highlighting okay I've got my two coats on and uh, I wanted to mention when I um, base coated this I used a two inch foam roller because it just makes it go on a lot smoother. You don't have any streaks in there. So now I'm just erasing all of my lines from my pencil from my compass so that we can start shading and highlighting this ribbon. Now this particular project only has four colors in it which is one of the things I love about it. You can make the most beautiful things with not very many colors. It's probably one of my favorite designs that I've designed. All right, so let me get all of that off of there. Now I'm just going to continue using the flat brush that I use to base coat my ribbon in. Um, I am using a half inch flat brush. Now, the, when I'm doing my ribbon, the reason that I prefer to use a flat brush as opposed to a curved flat or an angle brush is because I want my shading and highlight to remain crisp all the way down to the bottom. From the top to the bottom, I want it to be the same. And if I used an angle brush or a curved flat, it would force it to be less of the same distance when you get down towards the bottom because of the way the brush is. So we're going to start out with some Admiral Blue. Um, and some Lamp Black. These are our shading colors. You won't need very much Lamp Black. Alright, and I like to keep um, a misting bottle, just a little mister, and I just spray some water on my palette. And when I need water on the water edge of my brush, I can just go over there and pick up a drop of water that I just misted. So we're going to start with Admiral Blue. We're going to blend that out on our brush, and I'm going to show you. Um, how I blend for a float here. Okay, I've got my, my water drops over here so I can pick them up on the water edge of my brush. And I dip into my paint. 
and I like to load it like this in a little V. Okay, now you see it's come over a little bit on my brush just by the way it looks there. And it's soft here. So it, it's a graduated softness. So how it is right here on my palette is how my brush is going to stroke when I go to stroke it. If your brush is dragging in any at all when you start applying the, the paint, then you need to go pick up some water. Okay, I just walk that over just a little bit. Then I've got a mop brush here. It's a half inch mop and I'll mop just in the water edge to soften that float just a little bit. I'm going over and reloading back in that same spot because there's plenty of paint, plenty of water right there. And I am giving gentle pressure when I float because the paint, if you've got the right amount of water and paint in your brush, you don't have to push real hard. Just a gentleness when you float, softness, you want to keep the brush flat when you go, and soft pressure. And you'll get a really, really soft float that way. Okay, so I'm going to finish up a couple of these. And show you how I do the second float and the highlight on a couple. And then I'm just going to go finish them all and then we'll come back and start on the center of this plate. Just mopping that water edge. Okay, I'm going to do one more. I'm just loading my brush a little bit. I put too much water in it so I had to wipe it out and it's in my paint too much so I had to reload some more paint there. Softening. Okay, now it's dragging. You see how that's dragging right there? I need more water. So I'm going to pick up some, some uh, water on the water edge, some of those little drops of water on the water edge and I blended it back in. Still a little draggy. I could probably use a little bit more water. I just worked it out there. If it's dragging at all, go pick up some water. Okay, we've got three of them that have the first float on there. So now I'm going to pick up some more water on my brush, pick up my Admiral Blue on that corner, and a tiny bit of Lamp Black. That's going to darken that blue just a little bit. We want to repeat this shading. We really want it to look like it's folded under. Okay, I didn't walk that out. I'm keeping keeping it concentrated just on that edge. So it already looks like it's folding underneath there. I need water. I'm a little dry. Mop, 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 and the water edge. Now to clean your mop brush, it's very easy. You always want to keep it dry if you can. To go, just go to a wet spot on your paper towel and clean it out, and then a dry spot and dry it out, and it's good to go. Nothing special for doing that. You always want to remember which which edge need water, which edge your. Uh, mopping with so that you always put that in the water edge and if it gets paint on it you won't accidentally carry it into some other area of your painting. Okay now we're gonna highlight. So we're gonna get some some snow white and we're gonna mix a little bit of our our base color. Still using this um, flat brush. If your if your piece is smaller you might want to go to a smaller flat brush to do the highlighting on here. But uh, mine's a bigger piece, so I'm going to stay with it. So I'm, I'm going to pick up white on my brush and a little bit of that base color. And I'm going to work them in together. So I've got a pale blue here. Okay. So this will be our first highlight on here, and we're going to do a back-to-back -back float. 
we want to go down the center with the white in the center and I'm laying my brush down flat light pressure I'm gonna walk it over a little bit I'm going to mop that edge now I'm flipping my brush over so that the white edge is back in the center and I'm gonna go right beside that one but not overlap it and I'm gonna walk it out soften that a little bit okay we'll do all all of the ribbon this way with this first float back-to-back -back floats I used to be so terrified to do these I thought oh my gosh they look so difficult I'll never get it but they are really pretty easy as long as you've got enough water in your brush to keep that float soft and then just walk it out a little bit and if you get paint because this has a solid black background if you get paint anywhere on the background when you're done painting that you don't want on there you can just go and touch it up with your black paint that's the good thing about um, painting on a solid background is that you can touch it up real easy now I got out a line here on that one so I just took a damp brush and cleaned that up easy as that mixing just a little bit more here because I was running out of that little bit that I mixed do this last one here walk it out you want to come all the way down to the edge of that ribbon okay so we've got our first highlight there so now I, I want to get the the color out of my brush so I just rinsed it if you don't have a whole lot in your brush you can just wipe it out and we're just going to go with straight white this time. So I'm going to load it the same way, just on the t on that on the corner of this brush, with water on the other side. Okay. Now we're going to repeat this highlight, but we're going to keep this really concentrated right in the center, because this is going to give it its highest point. So I, you notice I didn't walk it out any, side by side, right there. Look at that, man. Can you see how that pops? Woo! Just lifts that right up off of there. Really gives it that look of going under something. My paint was a little dry there, but I just worked it out a little bit soft pressure if you're giving a lot of pressure and you're fighting it then uh, you've not got enough water in your brush okay let me do this last one here and then I will go finish these up the rest of these up and come back and we'll start on our center section okay there is three of the ribbon done and that was quick, quick, easy, easy. All right, and if you feel if you feel like the back-to-back -back float is uh, something that's a little difficult for you, I would say just get some scrap paper and practice it first before you go on to your piece and do it, and you'll feel a lot more comfortable. All right, we're going to get ready to start on the pine needles, and you can do the center in whichever order that you want I think in my instructions I had the order as the roses or the flowers first uh, then the holly leaves and the pine needles and I'm actually going to do the pine needles first because they're behind everything and that way I can build on top of it so to start with our pine needles we're gonna mix uh, blue harbor and snow white two blue harbor one snow white I have to add a little bit more white in there. I had a little blob in there and I took it out and I think that removed most of my white paint. So we're just going to get a nice little light blue mix to start with and then we're going to build on top of this color. Now you're going to want to use a um, 
good script liner brush. You don't want one that's um, worn out too much. You want to be able to, to get a nice flow off of that brush. And I like them to have a little bit longer bristles on them because they'll hold more paint and carry it a little bit farther. So um, my pattern calls for a 10-0 liner. Both of these are 10 O's. This one is the JS Midliner and this is the Script Liner. Um, one says Low Cornell and one says La Cornell. Um, but they're basically the same brush. So, um, And then this one is just it's the Mighty Fine Liner. It's a 10 O as well. So it's, it's up to you which brush you prefer to use. Just needs to be a good one. A longer bristle one is is best. Okay, now I'm dipping into my water. I'm carrying the water in my brush over to my paint, touching down on my paint and pulling some paint out. And you'll have to do this um, as you use up this paint here. You'll have to get more water and pull some out and thin it down. You want it inky consistency, so you don't want it runny like water, but you do want it thin like ink. So now I'm just going to wash my brush out and dry it off on my paper towel because I don't want all that paint and all that water in there because it will affect how my brush delivers the paint onto my surface if I have it full of all that. Okay, now all, all of these are behind so I'm just going to do a, a couple of them and show you how I do them. So I draw my center line in you can you can make these they don't have to be perfect because you're going to be adding all your your stuff your needles on there and I'm just going to go right over those holly leaves okay, you see I didn't follow exactly the line that I put on there but that's okay creative license all right now you want to start in the center and pull out and this is why you want to have a good liner brush and your your paint the consistency of ink because it just flows off of the brush then all the way to the top now, I know these two are overlapping but my paint was dragging there so I just went and dipped into my water and mixed a little bit more in with that paint I already felt like it was drying out a little bit. And you're just going to keep pulling these out and layering them. So we'll start with this color first on all of our pine needles. And if you completely cover up your holly that you pattern that you put on there, no worries go back and add that on. Not a problem. Painting should be stress free. I'm going to fill in all around these roses here. Well, I'm calling them roses. I'm not sure that they are. They're just a flower that I painted. All the way up. Okay, we want to fill in over here. So we want to make our pine needles come out a little bit more. So, and you can determine which branch of needles lays on top of another one. That's all creative license. You just do what is pleasing to your eye. Okay, so we've got the first needles on. Okay, so now I just want to take my white and I'm just going to squirt some out over here on my palette. And then I'm going to take my palette knife, do the camera view here. I'm going to take my palette knife, okay, and I'm going to mix it in to my thinned paint here. A little bit more, I want a little bit lighter. And we're going to put this color on top that other color that we just put down. A little bit lighter I think. 
And then our final layer will be just straight white. So again, your paint needs to be inky. So if it's not, add some water to it. And then we're just going to add the second layer on here. You don't want to completely cover up all of that layer that you just put on there. And remember, we're going to be adding white on top of this. So I'm going to have this one on top of that one. water because it's not wanting to flow. So let me add some water here. Or maybe I've got too much water. Alright, now this one, I'm going to start the second layer here. I'm going to do the ones that are not underneath the other two sets of needles. Now this one comes over this one so I'm going to have it. And your pine needles don't always have to curve you know, back this way. You know, they can go up. They don't just put them on randomly. Try not to be controlled with it as you do it. The looser that you are painting these on the better it's going to look. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out. We're going to do just white. So as you thin your white, you want to make sure that you're dipping into clean water. Not your dirty water over there. I'm going to put some white ones on here. I like to get when I know there's something that's going to be, you know, around it. I like I like to get filled in. You know, I don't want I don't want a lot of empty space. Oops, dipped into the wrong color. So let me wipe that out of my brush and go into white. Okay, so you see that one's starting to pop pretty good. last one down here. Okay, we've got those three sets of pine needles right there. Now we want to um, clean up the center so that first mix that we did you can use straight blue harbor you can use that first mix that we did for the first set of strokes I just want to clean up the center so I just want to stroke this down the center and you can also take just a, a touch of white and if you want. I did not put this in my instruction, but if you want to highlight the center of those a little bit more, you can do that. So we're going to go around and finish all of our pine needles that same way, and then we'll be ready to move on to our holly leaves. Okay, I've got all my pine needles in. I uh, transferred back in my patterns that I covered up. I still There's still some that are a little bit tricky to see but I'm gonna work it out here okay we're gonna to go to the holly leaves next and we're gonna base all of them in with blue harbor so you just find all your holly leaves paint right over any pine needles that you need to now I'm just using a 
four round. Yours will be a smaller piece if you're doing on the size that I originally did. Um, so you can use a, a two round or you can use a small flat or a filbert, what, whatever it is that you're comfortable using. But we want to go around and get all of our um, holly leaves based in with this blue harbor and then we're going to come back and add the detail to those. All right, I've got all of my holly leaves base coated now. Um, I want to point out there are some gaps in my pine needles here. Like here, I'm going to want, after I get the holly leaf painted in, I'm going to want to bring some of these out more and up onto that. Um, bring some of these out a, little, out a little bit more down here. I'm just going to... After, fill in and overlap them a little bit on to a few places of my holly leaves. I don't want um, I don't want so much bareness like this one here needs to come out. So I'm going to um, do that when I'm done with all of my holly leaves. So now that we've got them based in with Admiral Blue we're going to shade with them and I am using a curved flat I love these for floating shades, but I want you to use the brush that you are most comfortable with. Um, if you prefer a flat brush for shading or an angle brush for shading, then um, use that. Uh, I just love the curved flats because they make your floats look so incredibly soft. So you want to have on your palette Admiral Blue, a little bit of Lamp Black, and of course your uh, little water drops. Uh, missed some water drops on there so you'll have those for picking up. We're going to first shade our uh, holly leaves with Admiral Blue. So you're going to load your brush the same way I showed you earlier in that little V get, making it soft on there. And then you're just going to start on any holly leaf that you want. And we're going to float on one side use your mop brush to soften if you need. Now this particular um, one here is underneath this one. So if you need you can take your chalk pencil and draw that in. So we want to shade that. I pick up paint quite frequently when I'm shading. I'm going to keep that more at the bottom. I'm going to actually come back and highlight that edge there. So this this will be our first shading. And again, you have creative license to put your your shadings. Either you can put them all on the bottom, you can put them all on on one side. I kind of like to go to one side when I do mine and sometimes the bottom. They don't all have to be exactly alike, but you do want to try and keep the shading and the highlight where they're on the, the same sides. If you, if you know what I mean. See all the, all the lights coming this direction, so you would want all the light, the highlights to be on that side. Uh, when we're all done with this, we'll come back and float some um, shading underneath like underneath here to make that those pine needles look like they're really pushed back underneath there so just continue your shading here now this one is on top of this one so I want to make sure I can see where that's at. This is a big one here, so I'm going to do the, the bottom of it. And this side, I think. Make sure I'm keeping you on camera here. Okay, so where am I at? This one here. Now that's really dark. But that's okay. They don't all have to be exactly the same. So this one I want to keep a little bit more of the shading at the base.
I just kind of tap walk it, you know, where I want it to go. And um, when I touch it with my finger, I'm just softening it, just softening that float a little bit, which is this, you can do the same thing with your um, mop brush, but sometimes my finger is just a little bit quicker. Okay, so this one here, you can decide which one is on top of the other one. Um, I think in my pattern, this one is on top of this one on, on my, you know, painted design. But, you know, it's up to you. So I think I'm going to switch it around, just show you how you can change it up. You don't have to do it exactly like mine. And we want a little bit of shading down here. This one. Okay, so we've got our first shading on all of them. Okay, so now we want to mix a little bit of black in with that, just like we did on our ribbon. We want to do the same kind of shading. So pick one to start with. I'm going to start with this one right here, and we're just going to go over the shading that we just did. This is really a pretty quick project, um, I think, but I'm a pretty fast painter, so I tend to not stress out too much about some of the stuff. I just tap it on there and This is a little bit bigger leaf, so I'm going to get some more water and some more paint so I can push that out a little bit farther onto that leaf. Just like that. This one's not going to need too much because I got that a little dark the first time. So when you get done with your, your shading here, we're going to move on to the highlight. Okay, I think that's the one that we started on. So there we've got our shading on there. Now you can go back and if you think any of them needs a little bit darker, like this one right here I think could be a little bit darker because that is definitely under so any of them that you think could could stand to be darker go ahead and just darken that spot just a little bit okay like this one right here Alright, that's looking pretty good there. Okay, our highlight is going to be Blue Harbor and Snow White, equal amounts. Um, so when, when I do equal amounts, I don't tend to worry too much about mixing, uh, unless I'm doing a great big project. So I will dip into my Blue Harbor, and then I will dip into my white, and I will just brush blend them. Okay. And if I think that's still not light enough, I might dip in there again. But it's just a brush mix, and it's just a, 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 light, a little bit lighter shade than the base color to make it pleasing to your eye. And then we're going to come back and highlight with just Snow White. So, let's get this on there. And I've got that paint a little bit far onto my brush. reload my brush here. So I just washed it out and dried it off and I'm reloading. Okay, let's go with that. 
much better. Okay. Now again, you can use your finger to soften it or your mop brush. Whatever is I tend to use whatever is most convenient and I always have my fingers while I'm painting. Sometimes I can't find my mop brush. But up there on the ribbon I would not have done that without a mop brush because that float is a little more detailed and you want it to be crisp and the mop brush helps it be that. walking out a little bit there so you can just mix as you go and I just kind of tap walk it Don't don't completely fill in in your uh, holly leaves because you still want to be able to see that blue harbor underneath there. That's why I soften it back with my finger so it doesn't overtake the whole the whole uh, holly leaf. Okay, I'll pick up a little bit of water. I'm starting to get a little dry on that water edge. Mixing just a little bit more. I see I got out line right there. Not going to worry about it. It's a black background. Can fix that up in a second. I love how this layering of paints just brings something to life. Let's see. Now this one is on top of that one, so I'm going to have to float on this side a little bit. Using the water edge, softening that back a little bit, and tapping it out. I think I may have to come back and float on the bottom edge of that again a shading so that it is a little more defined down there okay so we've got all of our first highlights on there. So I'm going to wash my brush out because I'm just going to do straight snow white <clears throat> and we'll have this just a little bit smaller area than our first. Okay so I you saw that I did less of a highlight there because that other one I brought it down farther and I carried it over. This one I'm keeping a little more tightly to the edge. not I'm not doing as much as um, that first highlight whenever you're doing highlights and you do you're doing more than one your second one should always be a little bit smaller than the first and that's what really gives you that brings your eye in there Side. That edge is not defined very well. And if you're, uh, make sure you're, you're drip getting water from your, your water drops, not your basin, because your basin has dirty water and you don't want to dirty up your white. This is 
really starting to pop. Love these colors. When I was designing this, I knew I wanted to do a Christmas project that was all in blues. So I um, couldn't wait to get started on this one. And I love having a, a black for the background because it just it, it just makes a project pop, I think. Um, I love to use black for a lot of my fall stuff. I just think that the black makes it pop really well. Okay, I think we've got all of that highlight on there. Our two highlights. Now we want to create the veins. And the veins are just going to be thin Admiral Blue. So again, use whatever liner brush is that you like best. I just like the 10-0 liners because um, the script ones because the bristles are longer and so it carries the paint farther. And you can do just a center vein on these or you can do a center vein and bring some other veins out towards the points. And your paint will be the consistency of ink, just like we did on these. Now after I get these veins in here, I'm going to go back and add some pine needles onto um, where some of them come up over my holly and to fill in any gaps that I don't feel got filled in well. I don't want my leaves to just seem like they're floating out in the air. I want I want everything to look like it, it is going together and layering well. So my first area that I want to fix is right here. So I still have some of that mix on my palette, so I'm just going to add some water to it, the base mix that I used there. And I'm just going to bring some of those needles out. Okay, and here too, I want to bring some coming over here. I'm just going to bring it right up onto that. Okay, and this one definitely needs to be a lot longer. So this is where you can adjust and play around with it and make it more pleasing to the eye. You don't want to have a lot of empty gaps or something that looks if it looks out of place to you then it probably is out of place so just go in there and add some more to it and this one here it comes up but I want more pine needles coming out behind it it just makes it m more attractive okay and then here we've got a lot of gaps I'm just going to fill that in. You don't have to fill in every gap, but you don't want big gaps where your, your eye is not, it's having a hard time following that. Okay, this I'm going to bring up a little bit because that flower right there will lay on a lot of that, but it's not going to uh, cover that little spot there. Leave it out a little bit. Okay, this one here needs to. I'm just gonna pull some of that over that holly leaf right there. Now I'm gonna get these little gaps filled in here, and then I'm gonna go back and see where I can pull some. Like right there, I can pull some of that up on the 
the holly leaf. When we get the main flowers done, if we want, we can come back and do that. But I didn't because these are my focal point, these flowers right here. And I didn't want anything distracting from those flowers. So I'm just filling this in with, with that base color that we originally did. A little bit more up in here. This one is probably the only one that I will add a little bit lighter color to. The, these right here, because there was such a big gap area there. And all the rest of them were just little fill-ins. Okay, so I'm going to um, pick up some white and mix it in with that color I just used. And bring some of this out. here I think just a little bit these are more behind so they don't have to have too much just a little bit okay we are going to come back and and uh, float at the end and I'm not sure that I put that written direction in there so those of you that have this DVD will have that little, little extra bit of information there spot I see here, a little bit in here. Okay, I think that that's looking pretty good for our pine and our holly. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it for a second here and see if there's any place that I want some needles to come up on top of my holly leaves, like right here. I want some of that one to come up on my little holly leaf there. That was kind of draggy. Didn't make very very crisp pine needles. Okay, and these over here I think need some coming up on them as well. So, let's see. This one can have a few from this one. And this one can have a few coming up on it. It's just it's just a little bit. It's not it's not tons and tons. This one here I think needs some because this pine needle. These pine needles are kind of going behind that one, but not completely. I'm dragon there because I don't have enough water in my brush. Okay. I'll here a little bit. All right, I think that just about does that. All right, we are going to base coat in all of our flowers now. We've got three big ones and three small ones. We're going to base coat those in with white. So, um, when you um, get to these, try to do each petal individually and that will, will keep you um, knowing where you need to shade. 
just use a, whatever brush is, is best for you that you feel comfortable with. I prefer to use a flat. Um, this is a 10. I might go with a 12 or a half inch. Try a 12 because this is a bigger, bigger plate. That one's a 10 as well. Well, maybe I'll just use a 10. Well, there's a 12. So I can use a 10 or a 12. I think a 12 will be good for these and maybe a 10 out here for these smaller ones. So you're doing, if you're doing a smaller plate, you might want to do a 10 and an 8, you know, or a round brush or a filbert. It, really it is completely your choice whatever feels most comfortable to you so let's go get those base coated in two coats of white and then we'll start our shading okay I wanted to show you what I meant by doing each petal so that you can see where your shading and floating will be now this is just the first coat so it's it, it's still pretty rough but you can see where each one of these petals are and even on the big flowers you can see which one lays on top of the other one so that's the best way to base coat in your petals so keep going get the second base coat on and we're gonna get ready to shade I'm excited okay we're gonna start working on our shading now um, I've got my two coats on here but there's something about this flower right here that I don't like. So it looks like a pinwheel the way that I have painted these in. So I, when I do this one I will probably put it on top and I may put this one on top. So when I do my shading I will adjust those shapes uh, there on that flower. I think everything else looks alright. Okay, we're going to start <coughs> shading, and um, again, I'm going to use my curved flat for shading. I have a much larger piece than probably what you're painting, so I'm going to use a 12 curve flat. I will probably go down to a 10 for some of these other smaller areas. Okay, so you want to have Blue Harbor and Admiral Blue on your palette, as well as your water spots your, from your misting bottle. Just spritz some water on there and have that handy. Okay, I'm down with my brush. You always got to wake your brushes up. They've been sleeping when they're dry. They're completely asleep and you want to have them damp so that they <clears throat> are soft and will do what you want them to do. Okay, we're going to start with Blue Harbor. We're going to load it on there with a very soft float of blue that means we don't want tons and tons of that paint on there we want to get a little bit of paint on our brush and we want to keep pulling it out away from where we started to get it soft we want a soft soft float we want it kind of washy <clears throat> we don't want these to be so so dark that the centers just take over the whole leaf um, another thing that um, I didn't transfer this part of the pattern so um, some of these have turned turned places on them so you can just use the pattern and transfer those in or you know just pick and choose which ones you want to have some turned places on it I'm sure this will not you know match my pattern but uh, this is for demonstration only so that's okay so I've got some some turn places on there I may add more later I don't know alright so let's start by um, working on some of these uh, turned places here so I want to float right next to it I'm laying my brush flat and I don't have enough color on my brush. It is not showing up on there as dark as I want it to, so I'm going to go back to where I was mixing and get a little bit more paint, or where I was loading, not where I was mixing, because this is straight Blue Harbor. Okay, and then this leaf lays on top of that one. Bring it down to the center. I'm going to soften that. Just in that water edge. 
this petal is on top of this one. This has a turn to place, so we're just going to do all of our turn to places and all of where one leaf lays on top of another, gently softening as we go, keeping your paint and your brush moist. I got some on that petal. I don't want that, so I just took the wet edge of my brush and clean that off. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go up here to this one. If you've got your brush loaded correctly with enough water and that soft paint, then um, it will just flow nicely off your brush. And like I said, these these curved flats, I just love them. They just keep everything so soft. Okay, now this is the one <clears throat> that I wanted to lay on top. So I'm going to have to come back probably and add some white there because it's very um, evident that that was not that way. So um, you, can, you can change your flowers as you go. They don't have to be exactly like I'm painting them here, you know, as far as petals laying on top of petals. Okay, this big leaf here, I think I'm going to make a, a turn to place on it. So I'm just going to create that. This this petal is going to be, not have a ton of white that you'll see on it. Okay, I'm going back to my palette and getting both water drops and a little paint. Softness to your floats is the key to making these flowers look fabulous. You don't want to overtake all that white. <clears throat> After we get this first float on, we'll go back and uh, erase any graphite lines on there that we don't want to have showing up. Now, um, if you paint over your graphite line with any amount of paint, then that graphite line is set in your project. So you'll, if, if that happens, you'll just have to, to be happy with it being in there because you can't really get it out unless you just base coat over it and start over. Depending on your base coat, that might not work out too well. your brush flat. But yet giving soft pressure. I can't emphasize those two things enough. Laying your brush flat and giving soft pressure. The only time you need to be up on the toe of your brush for floating is if you are doing a really tight, tight float. Then you need to be up on the toe. on the smaller ones. I think I will switch to a 10 curved flat. <clears throat> uh, 
depending on your piece, the size of your piece will determine if you even need to change brushes or not. Soft pressure, but yeah, my, my brush was flat until I got to the very end right there where I needed to be up on the toe. Now when you're floating, you don't want to um, go across a float that is wet because it will remove it. <clears throat> and then you'll just have to do it all over again. But you wouldn't be able to do it till it dries because anytime you go over anything that's that's wet, you you have anytime you paint something, you have to let it dry before you can go over that particular area again. All right, let's move on to these over here. Water drops. Pick up water drops, keep that a little bit too much paint there, so I just went and wiped it off. Some of this down here at the base. Okay, we want to float a little bit <clears throat> of this color in the center. Um, I'm going to wait and hold off before we do that. We're going to move on to the second float, which is going to be Admiral Blue. This float you want to keep because this Admiral Blue will take over. You want to keep it. Um, a washy, washy float. If you have to repeat it, I'd rather that you repeat it as opposed to getting it too dark to begin with. So you can see that my, um, I've added, have more water on my brush so that it's pretty washy right there. So I'm going to see how that looks. I may have to go a little bit darker. A little bit more paint, not too much more. So I, didn't, I didn't add too much more to that, just a little bit. I want it really a little bit darker in these these darker places. Uh, so that's basically where we're going to put this color is on all these curved places and where another uh, petal lays on top of another one. We also need to put a little bit of the um, Blue Harbor on the outer edges of these turn places so we'll do that when we get this part done. So now I'm not laying my brushes flat this time. I'm, I'm staying up on my toe a little bit more because I want that float to be more concentrated just right in those tight places. Picking up fresh, fresh paint and water each time because I want I want to have control of my brush and if I let it get dry, and my paint get too thick, then I don't have control and I I want to be in control of the paint, not have the brush in control of it. Okay, so I think. The um, Admiral Blue on that particular flower looks pretty good. So I'm going to move to this one. And again, we're just getting those those deep, 
darker places. Climb up a little bit more on the toe. Still keeping that soft though. We don't we don't want it to become a hard line in any way. So every couple of strokes at least you're gonna have to pick up fresh water, fresh paint. And if the paint is getting too far across on your brush and your float is getting out of control, getting really wide, then you just need to go wash your brush out and, and start and reload it. This one right here, I forgot to put the Blue Harbor underneath that. I'm just going to keep going here. This one too. Okay, I think I've got all the shading on those big flowers, so I'm going to move to the smaller ones. More water, more paint. Keeping it soft. Oops. Tight. Float. I need more paint there, I can tell already. I'm going to be up on the toe more. Not laying my brush flat like I did. for the first float. Just a tiny bit more paint there. I may have to come back and highlight that that one make it stand out a little bit more. One more uh, petals here. A little bit too much water. That made that float a little bit wider than what I wanted. Not so controlled, tight. Paint. You can tell when your brush needs either paint or water or both because it will just drag and pull and you won't get anywhere with your paint. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm going to add some, some white highlights on this real quick before I do anything else. These turn places I tell you what before I add the highlight now you'll you may want to go to a 
small um, angle brush, like a quarter inch or something, to do these. I'm just going to stay with this number 10 because I've worked with it long enough. I think I can do this. But we want to have a little bit of this blue on the back edge. And we're going to highlight the front of it. <clears throat> but this will give it the illusion more of being turned. Keeping that tight, tight on there. Now our highlight's just the white that we painted it with. But because we've added this blue on here, you know, it's toned that white down a little bit in, in places. So um, this will just make it pop a little bit more. Okay, I think for now we've got our shading until we shade in the very center. So we want to go with our white. And um, I'm going to continue with this 10 curved flat. And I'm going to load a lot of white on my brush. Uh, and I want to just come back in here and kind of walk that down towards the float. So that, that's the one that I just did. So you can see the difference between that and that. So even though this is a color we've already painted, we're just giving those very tip-top highlights. This one I want to bring it down a little bit. I'm just using the water edge to take that. Soften that back. Okay, so, so that's how we're going to add the highlight. So like on this one here that's all white, I'm just going to basically add another layer of white to it, make it crisp and pop. And then when we come back and do our center shading, really bring that out. Okay, so this one, where am I at? Here. We'll need more white there, and then I'm going to just kind of walk it into the center, because I want the center of that to be white, white. Okay. Same with this one, because you see most of that petal. I'm just going to walk it in. Keep it out of my shading. Use your finger to dab that back if you need to. Just going to bring those together. Okay, now right here, one of these needs a shadow. I would say this one because it looks like it is underneath that one to me. But you know, if it looks opposite to you, then you can change that around. Now you may have to do this highlight a couple of times to get it the brightness that you that you want. So because that one's going to be underneath, I'm just going to add some of this white on this edge here. Kind of walk it down in there. And on this edge, I'm going to put a shadow underneath that. <clears throat> I'm 
I'm just tapping that down into the center so I can get that bright, bright down in there. I'm going to wipe my brush off because the paint's getting over a little bit farther on it than I want. Now, <clears throat> these here that have a couple of turned places where I've almost filled it completely with white, I'm just going to dab in like a circle in the center, keeping the paint in the center. It's almost like when you do a bullseye float. If you've done a bullseye float, you keep, you keep the paint to the center, and then you just keep dabbing in a circle, and that keeps the brightest color right there. And then if you need to mop it, mop around the outer edges. Put a little bit of that in here. I'm moving my brush around so that the white paint is always in the center. Need more white here. So dab that up a little bit. Tap it. Okay, this one here needs some white in the center. So I'm going to just dab that in there. The flowers are white, so we want to make sure that they reflect that white and not turn blue. I mean, it's a blue Christmas, but no, the blue is the shadows of Christmas. This one here needs some white in it. Need some up here. And I'm just going to tap that down, keeping the white to the center. So when I have to move my brush, I have to come back and refloat that because I got my white over just a little bit too far there. Okay, this one needs some white in the center. Line there. I bet you guys never do that. All right, this one needs some white in the center. It's behind these other two, so it's not going to have tons of white, but I'm just dabbing it on there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the edge that has my water, I'm just kind of taking it and softening it back a little bit. This one needs some white in it. I'll go out and do some more on those little flowers and let these dry a little bit. <clears throat> then I need to come back and do the edges of the turned places. Now I'm just softening this with the, wa with the water edge. Um, Alright, let me go do some of these smaller flowers here. Take a damp brush, take some of that off, got our lines. That's a place I can't fix with the black paint, so I want to be sure and get that off of there. Turn it this way so I can push the brush instead of pulling it. Okay, this one here. This way, so you can see it better. Okay, this last one here will kind of stay. On the very tip there. I don't want to cover up my, my shading that I did there. Okay, <clears throat> let me go find the one that I didn't shade under. Let's see, one that's laying on top of another one. Where is it? Right there. Okay, I'm going to do the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Blue Harbor first. Ooh, that's bright. 
don't want it quite that dark. That is just way too dark. Let me get a little more water on my brush. Soften that paint. Okay, I turned it. Now I don't know where it went. Alright, I'm just checking it to see if I need any more Admiral Blue shading anywhere. If there's some places that I want to be just a little bit deeper. And then I'm going to come back with some white. And I do want these turn places to be, to be darker. So I'm going to start with this one in the center. I'm going to deepen those turns, especially in the darkest areas there. I want that turn to really look like it's got a deep area. That it's, it's raised up off of the the petal. do that with the, the really dark there. I'm still keeping this pretty tight on that toe. I don't want to cover up all that white that I just put on there. This one over here. I think this is the one I didn't do yet. A little bit darker. And up on the toe. All right, let's do the highlight on our turned places. We're going to use white. And again, you may want to go to a smaller brush, so the, the edge that is on top of the flower, we want to lighten that. And we may have to do this two times, depends on how much blue got on top of that white, because we want to keep it, keep it bright. I guess I could be using my turntable here that I have this setting on. I'm not constantly turning it with my hand. That might be a little bit easier for you, I hope. I just have to remember what I painted. Right. White paint. It's drying out already. So I can tell I'm going to have to get fresh paint and do this a couple of times. Fresh paint. Up on the toe in this very narrow area right there. I'm going to be up on the toe a lot for these because they are so tight and I want I don't want to cover up the blue on the outer part of it. But that means I'm constantly going back and getting fresh paint so that my white stays bright and doesn't start drying out. 
Not really sure what I've done, what I haven't done. Clean my brush because that white got over too far. All right, where am I? Let's do this one here. Okay, this one's really tight, so I'm going to be really up on the toe there. Oh, goodness gracious. And did not want to spread it out that far. So I'm taking a damp brush and wiping it off. this white I'm going to a little bit onto that because I made that too dark. Alrighty. Okay, I see one that might need a little bit more on it. Where did it go? Turn places are looking pretty good. Now we want to shade the center of these. I'm going to put my stop in here so this quits spinning. We're going to go with um, Admiral Blue. We want this to be a soft float, so you're going to add some water to that blue and get it soft. We want it soft, like this. See, that's pretty much straight paint, and this is soft. So I added, I added, I had more water on my brush so that it would soften that a little bit. I would rather start out soft and build and as opposed to getting too dark too quick. So now I'm just going to tap this around the center all the way around. I'm loading for each flower because I want to make sure that my brush is not dry and it's not going to drag. I'm just tapping that around. This is just to set those spots in. We're going to come back after we get the, the center dots in and they are dry. And add some more of this to the center. Okay, I want to wash a little bit around the, the base of, of these. Okay, darken those up a little bit. Okay, let's add the dots in the center and while they're drying we'll go shade around some of this other stuff. So our dots are Admiral Blue, Harbor Blue, then White. So we start out with Admiral Blue. Now you need to have um, fresh paint when you do this because if you try and do it with old paint it will not come off of your brush so put a little bit of each one of those colors out we're going to start with the admiral blue and then the blue harbor then the snow white now you want to take just a a liner brush if you have an easy dot tool which they come in a set of two if you have these uh, you can use these I would use the number one, the smallest dot, maybe the number two, but not any bigger than that. But uh, I'm just going to use a liner brush because I just think it goes on much quicker that way. So I just dip straight into my paint, the fresh paint. Okay, then I just want to come and make dots in the center. I'll bring them out a little bit, not make them quite so controlled, a little irregular. Nothing is perfect in nature, so we don't want our painting to be perfect. So I'm just going to dot these in around the center. It's 
first color. Admiral Blue is our first color. Fresh paint, very, very important. Okay, now I'm going to wash that off. We're going to get Blue Harbor next. Fresh paint. And we're going to make this a little bit smaller than what the... Um, you probably won't see this as much either, but um, not quite go out as far as what the Admiral Blue did. Okay, and now we're going to use Snow White, and we'll keep that more to the very center. I like using the liner brush because it keeps my dots more irregular. So I can see this one right here. I need to bring these dots out a little bit more. Bring my blue harbor out a little bit more. Then I'm going to have to bring my white out a little bit more. It's not quite in the center of this flower, so we need to keep it center. Okay. Okay. That's our big flowers. So we're going to let them dry before we do another shading around them. And we're going to shade out here on some of this stuff. I'm using my bigger curved flat, the uh, 12 curve flat. I'm going to do a float of Admiral Blue. And I'm going to take it um, like, can't tell where my point is here, and make it look like the, um, the holly is up off of. We'll do this with the berries too when we get the berries on here. So it kind of makes it look raised above the, um, and you can you can do like this particular pine needle is on top of the other one. Um, this pine needle, oops, is on top. just makes everything look like it is, you know, something's on top of something and nothing is just floating out there. This is a little bit heavier float than what we did on the flowers itself, so it's not not quite as washy. I don't even have you on camera there, sorry about that. Okay, I'm just going around every every one that I can see. I'm going around that the flowers in the middle too. A little bit on that flower. Let me take it off. Okay, go around this one. I hope that's showing how that's really keeping that, you know, raising that up. I don't know if the effect is showing as well on camera as what it's showing for me.
Oops. Keep it off of here. And even the, the flowers in the center go over. Whatever they go over, you just float right over it. Not over the flower itself, but... go over this around this and I think that will probably be pretty good I'm gonna let my dots dry just a little bit longer All right, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now, uh, your circles, you can transfer them on, or you can just draw them by hand. Uh, let me get my pattern and see where they're at. I'll get them fairly close to where you are so that... Uh, Pattern. Crooked. Alright. Now I'm going to figure this out here. Okay, it goes that direction. So I've got one here. I've got one here. 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 Okay, I think that's probably plenty. I might add one here because this is a little bit bigger piece, so I think it could stand to have a, a couple more. All right, we're going to base those in with Admiral Blue. I'm going to use a round brush to base them in. I said Admiral Blue, I meant Blue Harbor. Sorry about that. Okay, base them in with Blue Harbor. So I'm going to let you go, get all those based in. We're going to come back and finish out these berries and the shading in the center of these flowers. All right, got the berries all based in. Uh, erase any graphite lines that you need to erase. Uh, we're going to shade around the center again with Blue Harbor. No, Admiral Blue. I'm getting my blues all mixed up. Admiral Blue. Okay, so we're just going to intensify that that we put in there a little bit and define the centers of the flowers a little bit more. It's just a tap, 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 tap. All the way around, keeping that blue right there on the inside. Okay, that makes those centers pop. All right, now we're going to finish off these berries. So I'm going to show you how to do a couple, and then you can go finish them. 
and we'll we'll shade behind them like we we did the others the other stuff. So we're gonna shade with Admiral Blue. So you want to keep this <clears throat> a little bit tighter, more concentrated float because these berries are small. Now if your piece is quite a bit smaller, you could probably just take a round brush and and uh, line along the bottom edge. You're going to have to float this shading two times. Actually this one is underneath this. So I'm going to do it on this side. Just work all the way around your, your piece with these berries. I'm just going to work on these few right here so you can see the finished part. Okay, they're pretty dry so I want to float that shading again. Remember, you have to make sure that they're dry before you repeat a float or a shading or go across one because you'll just remove it. Um, now we're going to highlight hmm, the Snow White, it says over there. It doesn't say that I mixed any. So let me see how this looks. I may want to mix some of that Blue Harbor with this. This might be too bright. No, I think that I think that will be fine. We'll do it with blue or, or with Snow White. Sorry. So we'll we'll highlight them with Snow White because we're keeping it soft. Soften it back with your finger if you need to. If you need water, remember to get into the clean water. Ooh, I carried that too far. You see how when I touch it back with, with my finger, it just softens that float? Just uh, makes it really soft. Let me do one more up here. all the ones that I shaded. Okay, I'm seeing those berries pop there. So we want to take our liner brush. And add a little white. You can, you can add a white line highlight, a white dot highlight. You can take your shading brush, whatever brush you're using for shading, and just intensify the, the shading. Huh. So, it, it, there is no right or wrong way to do this second highlight. Okay, so I just dotted some on there. Okay. And that finishes the berries off. And then you're going to float like you did everything else behind them and make them look like they are popping up on like like they're on top okay so you want to do that to all your berries so let me zoom out a little bit oops that's not out so we can see the plate Our ribbon going around it. Our beautiful flowers in the center. <laughs> 